Welcome everybody to Fergo and the Freak. My name is the Glorious League Freak. This is episode 166 and today we have a very special guest. It is erotic romance author Kate Elling. Hello Kate, how are you? Good, thanks. How are you? I'm very well. Now, people are going to be wondering why I'm interviewing an erotic romance author and there is two very big reasons why. Two very big, big reasons why. <laughs> <laughs> they both, you have written two books that have an NRL theme to them. Yes. Now, it, uh, what... <laughs> Okay, so I've got a million questions, all right? So obviously, Far away. <laughs> obviously you're an erotic uh, romance author to begin with, and you're a big rugby league fan. You're a Parramatta Yells supporter. At what point do you decide that you want to merge your two loves and and decide to write one of these books that has an NRL theme? Well, I belong to the Romance Writers of Australia. It's a big group of writers across Australia. And there's another girl in there, Donna Gallagher, and she wrote seven rugby league books. And I oh. read, I was reading them, and suddenly I thought, I could do this. Why am, I could write a rugby league book. And she had a, um, a book about a halfback, and it wasn't – the halfback I liked and <laughs> <laughs> and so I was thinking oh how would I write one what would I do and then we happened to go to the 2012 grand final and I was sitting there and I was watching um, Cooper Cronk play and suddenly I thought oh my god he'd go on holidays and he'd meet a woman and she'd have to challenge him and they'd have like this amazing competition and so um, my two favourite halfbacks are Cooper Cronk and Peter Sterling, so my character became Cooper Sterling. <laughs> Cooper, Cooper Sterling is his name? Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. That's so but amazing. One okay. of my friends said it, though, um, I was, it was very good that I hadn't chosen Peter Cronk. <laughs> Peter Cronk, yeah. That was she didn't think Peter that would work. Garbo or something, <laughs> Peter Cronk. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, he sounds, Peter Cronk sounds like somebody that wears stubbies and knocks back VVs. He doesn't sound yeah. that deal. Like um, Matty Johns' character. Yeah. yeah. So, Reg. okay, yeah. so, so, <laughs> Cooper <laughs> Sterling. So, it, when you're writing Cooper Sterling, <laughs> he, okay, and your two favourite players are obviously Cooper Cronk, Peter Sterling, right? Yeah. When you're writing for Cooper Sterling, what does he look like in your head? Cooper Cronk. <laughs> okay. A um, bit different, though. I had to, yeah, uh, mostly Cooper Cronk. Mm. Okay. It's really tough doing, like, research for that. I bet. Like, you got yeah. to get pictures of him without his T-shirt on yeah. and things like that. Yeah. yeah. And then when you go to the footy, you know, if he walks off the ground, takes his shirt off, you've got to take a lot of photos. You know, it's really hard. Very, yeah. very difficult stuff, you know. Yeah, it's really Lots of tough. long nights looking up stuff, <laughs> researching. Um, That's the one. So, okay, so with your book, what's the name of the book? Oh, that, that one's called Deep Diving because <laughs> um, because they went on a uh, – they were met scuba diving over at Lord Howe Island. Okay. So that's another thing that I've done. I just threw that in because I knew you could compete doing that. Okay. And so, what what is the general uh, idea? Like, obviously, you don't want to give it away. But what is the general, like, lead into the good parts, let's just say, of the book? Uh, you mean the sex scenes <laughs> or the romance? Basically, if, look, if you just read the sex scenes out to us, that would be fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> no, just like a general, like, what's the whole thing? Like, his season is ended, he's looking to get away, and then he meets, you know, well, someone. She, she, um, they're both on holidays. They were paired up, I think. Oh, well, that's bad, isn't it? I can't remember now. <laughs> um, They were paired up to dive as dive buddies because they were both on holidays separately, and she's an athlete as well. She was a Olympic um, triathlete, I think. Okay. And so, th- so they're um, – they're naturally very competitive, 
Mm-hmm. So then they start competing on underwater photography and, you know, they decide to have a holiday fling. And so then they have a competition where um, they can't have the same sex any time they have it. So they've got to try something different all the time. Okay. So I think I ended up with um, 13 different sex scenes. That, Holy hell. Yeah. Yeah. That, that so sounds fantastic. Yeah. They had, I think they had 13 days there, so I had to do something different every day. Yeah. <laughs> so it's a it's a it's competition that involves stamina. It involves uh, backing up the next day. Yeah. Yeah. Just uh, like a uh, footy game. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Lots of rehydration. Yeah. Rehydration. Uh, lots of food, carbs. Yeah. Yep. No one wants to get the bends. You know. No. Lots of diving. That's it. Yep, lots of diving, um, lots of um, activity, yeah. beach. <laughs> yeah. And when you write it in a book, you can, you know, they can have, be out in the sand and no people come and they don't get sand in bits and, yeah, yeah. it's easy yeah. in a book. Yeah. There's no there's no friction book. Bu- there's no friction burns from sand in a book. You know? No, that's right. No crazy yeah. knees, nothing, yeah. Oh, that, that would be cool to write a book like that where it's just like uh super super like realistic. Oh. Where it's, you, like you've Injuries got all, like, everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> you've got like sand. What are they called? Sand fly bites and things like oh, that. Oh, that would be awful. Wouldn't yeah, it would be terrible. But anyway. You might be inspiring me. <laughs> Well, you know, <laughs> what, all of the worst bits. <laughs> be I'll right. call it leg freak. Yeah. Oh, no, don't do that. Because that would be sensational and amazing and I'd have to sell heaps of copies for you, I'm just saying. Um, <laughs> as long, look, as long as you get the word girthy in there every third or fourth, you know, oh, sentence, okay. that would be great. Just like oh, right. you know, leg freak, <laughs> as long as it's not my gut, you know. You just walk in, puppy <laughs> bastard, this girthy. Okay. You know, um, right. So, <laughs> so you've done two books. Your first oh, book was, sorry, come on. Yeah, the first book was pretty tame compared to the second one. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. So, what what made you decide to step it up for the second one? Oh, because um, the same sex marriage debate was happening. Uh huh. <laughs> and uh, oh, I don't know. I was thinking about that and thinking, you know, really, it wasn't going far enough. <laughs> Because, uh-huh. um, you know, same sex, um, you know, we didn't have, we don't have in rugby league anyone who's out in a same sex relationship. No. Uh, not while they're playing, only Ian Roberts when he came out afterwards. Mm-hmm. So I was thinking about that. And then mm-hmm. I was thinking how hard that would be, you know, to be in a same sex couple. And then I thought, oh, well, you know, you really don't want to limit it to couples, do you? So, mm-hmm. and I quite enjoy writing multiple people in a sex scene so i have a threesome oh really two guys who play um on the same team and a girl who's a sports reporter and she she's friends with one of them and she twigs that something's happening yeah ah (laughs) that's interesting okay what's the can i ask what the name of the uh fictitious female sports reporter is oh (laughs) Hannah, somebody. Okay. Hannah. Yeah. Okay, that's Ooh, interesting. So she, mm-hmm. she, so she picks up on there's something going on with this other player and his friend. Yes. Okay. And then, yeah, and she wants in, really. She's kind of a <laughs> player herself. And she and he have, you know, had a flings in the past yeah so she's like oh come on <laughs> if you're doing this i want in on it yeah yeah and she really but she doesn't really know the other guy all that well he's a lot younger okay yeah so well, that's really interesting and so do you when you come up with the idea for a book like this mm-hmm. like do you Do you go into the writing of the book with a general idea of the story you want to have, or do you just start writing a few ideas out and see where you end up? Yeah, I'm the start writing and see where I end up. Yeah. And, and yeah, some people plan it all out, and Mm -hmm. I try to. Like, I tried to with the first one with all the sex scenes because they were having a competition, so I had a list, Mm -hmm. and... They just went off on their own and did whatever they wanted, and my list didn't happen. <laughs> so then, 
with this one with the threesome, they didn't really turn out how I thought either. Okay. Most threesomes have, um, <laughs> in romance, most threesomes in a story have um, like a dominant person yeah. and submissive people. Whereas yep. I wanted these three people to kind of have a relationship where they were all equal. Yeah. So so there wasn't a dominant thing. And in the two guys, like one guy's the captain, the other guy's a really young guy in the team. So mm-hmm. but I didn't want the young guy to be kind of um influenced by the captain. So he's the one who's kind of hit on the captain. And all right. Yeah, so they're kind of fairly balanced and then she came in and so I had to balance her up with um, the younger guy yeah. because she didn't really know him. So, yeah, that kind of went off in this way that I didn't really expect, but it was kind of interesting. Yeah. Okay. It, it's it's interesting because, like, when you said that you wrote down a list of different things for the competition for the other book, is, was mm. it the, the different book or the, the same book? The the That deep diving one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That, um, yeah. It just makes me think of, like, if you leave your list lying around one day and someone picks it up and they're like, what is this? It's like, it's like your to-do list or something. I had it stuck on the wall. Oh, jeez. I guess it's better than having it on the fridge or something. Yeah, I suppose, yeah. It's in my yeah. office, so I suppose, yeah. I don't know. I don't, yeah. I don't have um kids, so... That's pretty easy not to worry about. But if kids come and visit, I guess, yeah, my office is not the place they should yeah, be looking. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> so with, with your characters, do you, before you start writing, do you kind of flesh them out a little bit or do you, do you add that as part of your writing process as well? Um, they just kind of develop in my head I just start thinking about them and thinking oh what would he be like what would she be like what would that happen what if this happens and then I just start writing I get to the end of the story and then I've got to go back three or four times to kind of you know like mm, it's kind of like if you were drawing you'd have to put shade on and you Mm -hmm. know color them a bit better yeah so same with writing you've got to go back and you know, smooth out stuff and make sure that they're kind of acting consistently and that the that what you want them to be doing is actually what you've written on the page. Okay. Hmm. Um, is it? Can you hear a clicking noise? Like, yeah, I can. A, <laughs> We're yeah, being tapped, that, aren't we? Is that you or is it me? I don't know. I figure that ASIO is probably tapping us because we're talking probably. about sex or something. No wonder. Mm. It's the first time I've ever talked about it, I've got to say. Um, so, uh, such a bad influence. <laughs> so, okay, so I've got some questions about Cooper Sterling right now. Yes. So who does who does Cooper <laughs> Sterling play for? Because obviously, I mean, are you, do you, when you write it, do you say that he plays for just a, a place? Because I guess you can't really say that he plays for a certain club. No. I think I had him playing in Melbourne and she was from Adelaide. Okay. But I'm not really sure. Yeah, I don't think I said that I didn't name the team. Yeah. But, you know, it's pretty easy to work it out. Yeah, um, yeah and he played for Australia as well. You know, okay. so they talk about she was in the Olympics. So, uh-huh. you know, they've got kind of that to chat about and stuff. Yeah. And was was he a halfback? Yeah, okay. yeah, I made it really obvious. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's the way you go through. Did, had he played three hundred games? Um, I don't think he, he had then. Yeah. Okay. Was he a Queenslander? Um, yeah. Oh, well, I'm turned off. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah, that's he was. The other it. guys aren't. The two guys are New South Wales players. Yeah. Oh, how could In you the do other that? Story. How could you do that? That's terrible. Um, <laughs> So, uh, yeah, like, it's a really it, it's really interesting that you've been able to combine the two th- two of the things you really enjoy in life, and like I find that fascinating that you've used like what you like you're obviously a footy fan that you've infused that into your writing. Um, was it difficult? Like when you've obviously you've you've written other stories before, was it difficult to 
write it and were you more critical about it because you did love the game? Um, no, um, yeah. Do you know what? I'm really critical when people call it rugby. <laughs> yeah, And people yeah. say it's rugby union and I, I, I noticed that I really get my back up again about that. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah, for me, um, the... The Cooper Sterling one, the deep diving book, that I didn't really go into a lot of rugby league detail because they were on holidays. Yep, yep. But the other one, yeah, I did put in a few rugby league things. And do you know, I I did like a state of origin um, game set up, but mm. I couldn't have them leave Sydney. So I had to make all the games in Sydney. And it really irked me that I couldn't make the story work <laughs> by doing it properly. Ah, uh-huh, right, but, yeah. Yeah, so sometimes the truth gets in, you know, gets, you can't work the truth into the story properly, so you've got to have a bit of poetic license. And that yeah. kind of annoys me because I'm a bit of a fact crazy person, so. Yeah. But I get over that. <laughs> yeah, I get, and I guess like a lot of your readers, and especially with like they, they want to get away from, like things as well they don't mind that you haven't said well he you know he's at training at 9 yeah. p.m. 9 a.m. the next day and <laughs> yeah that's true and you know what like um I went to the to a writer's um convention thing and I was speaking on a panel with sports other sports writers and mm-hmm. there was a woman who writes like um the NFL and um hockey from America Mm-hmm. And there was a girl who wrote a baseball one from Australia and a girl who writes rugby union books. Mm-hmm. Do you know none of them watch sport? Oh, really? <laughs> I was sitting on the panel and I'm like, what do you mean you've never watched a game? What do you mean you don't know what the game's about? I was yeah. really shocked. Most romance writers who write sport books aren't sports fans. That's really interesting. Yeah, because you would think that, uh, like, how would they be able to write about certain parts of the sport or the, like the mindset yeah. of the, like, cause I, I feel as though different sports, sometimes the athletes have different mindsets, you know? Yeah. That's what I think too. And, yeah. and I think, you know, like so, um, there's some of the girls have, you know, the wrong terminology, like they'll use American terminology for, mm-hmm. for rugby union, for example. Or, ah, okay. And I don't think that works. Like, to me, it, I'm just like, oh, you don't know what you're on about. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it's really, um, yeah, it's interesting. They just like the alpha male type character. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's, I guess, well, that's I mean, what I, they're writing for. Yeah, and I guess, like, I, like I guess it's a almost a ready-made character to a certain extent. Like, as you say, that it's like the alpha male um, you know, they're athletic, they're sort of well off. Yes. You've got a lot of things that are built into it. Yeah. And girls fawn all over them. So you've got ready made conflict too because, you know, if they're in a relationship there's still gonna be girls hitting on them and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Like there's yeah, lots of what we call tropes that you can work with. Yeah. So that yeah, stereotype. Mm. Now, do you have an idea going forward for another rugby league themed book. Yeah, well, the the team player one, the one with um the two guys mm-hmm. and the girl, that I set up like a footy team. They were, I called them the Glebe Gannets, and yeah. so um I had three younger guys in the team who were Lyle's mates, and I had ideas for them, but I haven't written them yet, so. Okay. I wanted to get into a bit more, um, I don't know, um, social issues kind of thing. Okay. Like uh, I wanted to, one of the guys was Aboriginal, so I wanted to have a look at a bit of a racism thing. Yeah. And um, another guy is kind of a bit um, like autistic, I guess. He didn't okay. mix well with people. So, yeah. yeah, I wanted to play around with some of those kind of issues. Okay. But sometimes you scare yourself and stop doing them. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I guess with when you get, like even 
with those third rail issues as they call them it's like even just mentioning that you might want to write about it some people yeah. get upset about it you know <laughs> yep <laughs> um with that with that being said is there any chance that we could get a rugby league cheerleaders book that would be fantastic oh, yeah. i mean yeah. come on something <laughs> <laughs> Cheerleaders aren't supposed to play with the or mix with the players, are they? Yeah, but surely there are like I don't know. There, let's just say there must be, mustn't there? Podcasters, <laughs> they could maybe do something with. Oh, but, yeah, you, you, think? you see where I'm going with this? Yeah, I do. Yeah. Yeah. Just All right. right, I'll put that on my list. Yeah, and after I do no, my but, three oh. players, I'll do the Gannett um, cheer girl. Yeah. Yeah, the guys, right. they just meet like a podcaster who also commentates like lower grade games and okay. just 15 or 16 of them at one time. That'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing how, over the top. How long have you got? <laughs> hey, look. It'd this take is like, like you're uh, with them for a week or something? No, nah, no. Nah, it'd take like just, uh, oh, 17 minutes, minutes all up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like... <laughs> That's not how erotic writers write, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Especially when they're women. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know. Yeah. Um, it, it's got to be a realistic yeah. book. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> oh, oh, that could be the one with all the sand burn and stuff. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, uh, right. Okay. Once the, once the 14th or 15th walk in, they just get there like, ugh, stuff like that, you know. <laughs> Where the cheer girls are going, don't go with him. Yeah. (laughs) If you blink, you miss it. Yeah. Number eight walks out of the room with a hand in her head going, that was so disappointing. (laughs) (laughs) That'd be fantastic. Take the blue pill to him. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) He's running out. (laughs) Oh, jeez. Oh, man. Oh, Oh, no. You weren't looking for a serious conversation here, were you? <laughs> oh, look, it, this is fantastic. Like, <laughs> this is – I wish you could see my face. I've got the biggest grin on my face. This great. <laughs> so have I. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Um, so, yeah. so, yeah, so you do have you do have other story ideas going forward. Will we end up seeing some sort of series, do you think, with Cooper Sterling, or is he just a <laughs> one-off character? Oh, I think he was a one-off character. In oh, yeah. romance, they've got to have a happy ending, so you can't really have them as the, yeah, that they, they, they end up with a person in the end. Yeah. Okay. So that's so, one of the promises of romance. So, so yeah, so that's why you have a team, so you can do each book about a different player because they all get paired off at the end or shreed off or whatever, 17 cheerleaders and <laughs> happily ever after. Is yeah. there a 17 off? Man, that'd be great. Yeah. <laughs> um, so have you got other player names that maybe you've like combinations of names? No, no, I made up the others. I had, um, yeah, in team player, I, I went away from, well, actually I used a couple of descriptions mm-hmm. <laughs> that were like people. Yeah. But I went, Charlie Maxson was the captain guy and Lyle Smythe Jones was the other bloke. Okay. He sounds like a former rugby union player. Yeah, he does, doesn't he? <laughs> <laughs> but I but I described him as blonde and pale and everything and he contrasted to Charlie who was big and, you know, dark haired um okay. kind of guy. And one of my friends said, Oh, you know that Lyle Smith Jones? Every time I see Dane Gagai, I just know it, that you mil- modelled him on him. <laughs> and I, I'm like Dang guy, really? <laughs> and I yeah. just, I don't know how she got there from like a pale skin blonde man. But anyway, yeah. she watches Dang Gagai and thinks, yeah. So I don't that's know if really... people just read it and put their own footy players in the story, I think. Yeah, yeah that's a re- that is really interesting, actually. Wow. Um, yeah. I'm just trying to think of some of the names you could use, like, just combinations of like uh, Willie Finch. I think that would be a good one. <laughs> Can you imagine Willie Finch getting around, slinging it? Is he, is he with the 17 G girl? <laughs> no, no, that's uh, what would you call him? He'd call him a uh, league freak. I don't know, something like that. Um, Freaky league or something. Yeah, freaky league, something freaky along league. those lines. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what? 
what other I'm trying to think of any other cool names there would be like um man, come on. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know once so we finish recording this, I'll come. Yeah, I know that'll all like stuff. fifteen um, of them. It'll yeah. be fantastic. Let's see, there is some cracking ones. So, okay, so mm-hmm. I've got a question for you. Mm-hmm. What do you think of the Fifty Shades of Grey books? Oh, everyone asks that one. <laughs> Do that, re- oh man, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Doesn't so matter. I've been told. I've been told that romance. <laughs> Community can be pretty brutal. Did they I just ask you very the brutal. question that is like I don't even want to answer that question? <laughs> I'll tell you my story about Fifty Shades of Grey, which okay. just kind of answers it. Okay. But it was pretty huge, you know. Like, and I know I'm not young, you know. I'm in my fifties, mm-hmm. so my dad rings up and he says, "So these Fifty Shades of Grey, tell me about it." <laughs> and I'm like, oh, Dad, you know, um, I don't think it's your kind of book. And he mm. goes, oh, right. And, and my dad does know that I write these erotic books, so he's okay about it. Yeah. And I say, he said, have you read them? And I said, look, I read one. I, I had a lot of trouble with it. And he goes, mm. what do you mean you had trouble with it? And I said, oh, Dad, you know, like, Seriously, the girl's a virgin and she's having sex for the first time with this bloke and he just slams into her three times and she comes. Like, as if that ever happens. Oh, yeah. shit, I'm talking to my dad. <laughs> 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 and oh, and I kind of taper off and he goes, yeah, didn't happen like that for me either. <laughs> I was just... Oh, and God. I thought, oh, gee, yep. And that's Never, you ever, just ever have Hugging a... yourself in a hole forever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I was having like a, a literary discussion that yeah. totally railroaded. Yeah. That's... But anyway, yeah. <laughs> you know, you know, my my first thought when because I saw, I've seen, I think two of the movies. I think there's been two movies. And wh- did you see the first one? No, I didn't see the movie. I don't know if it's in the book, right? There's a scene where she goes into, I think she's going to sign the contract and she goes into, like, the office, mm-hmm. right? And his secretary brings in sushi. And all, <laughs> all I could think of was, where's that sushi been this whole time? Is, is there a fridge out there with sushi? When was that made? This is unsanitary, you know? I'm not eating that sushi. <laughs> and that's all I could think for the rest of the movie. But that's it. If something pulls you out of the movie, you're gone, aren't you? Or same in a book. You know, if something's that, like, triggers you or is something that you just find hilarious, mm. it's, yeah, tosses you complete. Oh, that's a bad way of saying it. Yes. But, yeah, throws you out of the book completely. Yeah, and I think that's what it did for me, Fifty Shades. I was just like, oh, no. Yeah. It was really I, clever, though, really clever marketing. It really um, was. I, I didn't read the book. Like, I, I obviously didn't own it, but I didn't read it. But I I was wondering what the writing was like, so I looked up some of the writing online, and mm-hmm. I, it just seemed clunky to me. I, I, like, I'm not asking you to, to talk about it if you don't want to, but I don't know. There was something about it that just seemed so, I don't know, it felt like it was written clunky. But well, it was a really clever thing because um, she was a marketing person, but she mm. wrote it as fan fiction. Mm-hmm. So she, you know, the Twilight, Bella and the mm-hmm. wolf, um, the vampire boy um, mm-hmm. <laughs> and the wolf boy, you know. Yeah, I, so I like she, the, that's called uh, necrophilia versus it? bestiality. I yeah, believe. that's the one. <laughs> Well, she took that and she said, what if he wasn't a vampire? What if he was a billionaire? And so that's where Fifty Shades came from. So it was like her homage to Twilight. And she had it on fan fiction sites and everyone loved it. So Mm. then she published it through, I think she's English or American, but it was a little Australian publisher that first had it. As oh, an wow. ebook, but mm. because of her marketing background and because everyone on the fan fiction sites loved it, it took off and and Fifty Shades was born. Yeah, and all of a sudden she got you had signed all these... by a big publisher, and yeah, 
he had all Everybody these housewives that were like wanted their yeah. hair pulled and stuff like that. I mean, <laughs> yeah. it was just with their kind of pink weird and fantastic and stuff. Yeah, yeah. All yeah. of a sudden, they, they were getting paddles and stuff, and yeah, it was really. Well, weird. it made sex um kind of put it into the public sphere a bit. Yeah. When it's yeah, it's usually such a taboo subject. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was good that way. I think people talk about it and they don't think you're quite so strange writing erotic romance now yeah, yeah. it also <laughs> helps when you say to them like yeah i like to be choked unconscious from time to time just chill <laughs> man it's in a book <laughs> <laughs> i don't know if the cheerleaders would like that <laughs> no oh, no not them me oh it's, not I, them anyway, you no not oh. me the character i mean the character oh the character yeah yeah, character, yeah. not me that's how <laughs> um, <laughs> so you know so, one thing that does creep me out though is sometimes yeah. when you're sitting at the footy and and you're watching and you start thinking my husband will go he's young enough to be your grandchild get off <laughs> and stop thinking about it <laughs> it could totally throw you, you know, like yeah. had some ideas for books and then, you know, or characters and suddenly I'm like, oh, I can't do that. He's way too young. Yeah. <laughs> do, do you can't sit that, and watch your footy. Do you find that as you get older, that, like the, the, the characters that you write about get a little bit more mature as well? Yeah. 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 And at, um, even like I didn't start writing until I was quite old, but mm-hmm. I've aged the characters in each story I've done, mm-hmm. yeah, it's about, it's a lot more fun when all well, in the beginning too. Romance, you er, the girls were supposed to be virgins. Um, that yeah. was kind of part of the promise premise, but now um, that doesn't have have to be. So mm-hmm. yeah, so yeah, I much prefer them not to be. Not <laughs> to have a bit of knowledge so, and fun that's, yeah yeah that's interesting well that's interesting so if they've not if if they've moved beyond well not you but if the general <laughs> thing is that they've moved beyond the virgin thing what would you generally categorize it as being now is it someone that's like had bad experiences and is looking to explore now or is it is it something along those lines there's every type everything that you could imagine yeah. Um, yeah, romance covers everything. Like okay. there's, um, yeah, like the fantasy stuff, like the, you know, necrophilia and bestiality <laughs> with another name, yeah. There's, you know, that kind of fantasy stuff. There's sports yeah. romance. There's, um, you know, magic and dragons and shapeshifters and everything. Wow. So. But and they're still, you know, they're still the virgins. They're still the, um, you know, um, the girls who run away from the guy when they're pregnant and don't tell him till later. And mm-hmm. yeah, they're still, yeah, there's heaps and heaps. But yeah. I did when I wrote um, Hannah, who's the sports reporter who hooks up with the two guys. Mm-hmm. Um, a couple of reviewers did say they weren't sure why I bothered putting a woman in there because she was so much like a man. Oh, really? <laughs> because, yeah, because they still have that um, kind of um, girls shouldn't be um, promiscuous or say what they want about sex. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Hannah didn't. Hannah didn't cop any shit from either of the guys. So yeah, she got yeah, a bit the... of an. It's almost like um, the the old thing of like not only are they virgins but they're sort of um, embarrassed that they yes. like they don't want to have sex. And, yeah, and, you've and they've nearly got to be like pushed into it. And yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. And um, I wrote the one who's kind of yeah out there and says, "Come on, I want both of you." <laughs> yeah, yeah, hmm. excellent. <laughs> <laughs> um. So with your with your other books, how many non rugby league romance books have you written? Oh, um, I think there's eight, eight. I think some of them are short stories. Yeah, mm. yeah. And and like, I mean, it must be a cool way to come up with like different scenarios and oh, yeah. different sorts of like backgrounds for characters. I mean, is there is there one 
that jumps out at you that you've written that is your favourite? Yeah. Um, yeah. She was the hardest one to write, but she was my favourite. Mm-hmm. Um, her name's Lana, and mm-hmm. we did, um, I think, 13 um, erotic writers. Um, our publisher asked us all to write a linked story. Mm-hmm. So we had to do a short story, and we were playing off the, you know, the um, that Housewives TV show. Oh, yep, yep. Yeah. So ours were called Secret Confessions of the Sydney Housewives, mm-hmm. and uh, the publisher gave each of us the woman we had to write about. Mm-hmm. And my Lana was, she liked toy boys. She was mm-hmm. an ex-actress. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I started writing her. I had so much fun writing her because she was about my age and um, she was hooking up with 20-year-olds and, mm-hmm. oh, it was the best fun. And then <laughs> I, was te- I was telling my husband and he said, oh, so like your nephew. Honestly, I couldn't finish the book. I was just, I was just like, oh, I creeped myself out totally. I had to get a friend to help me get it back on <laughs> That's Back into so... Lana's head, yeah. It sounds but, like um, your husband likes just – he just loves – like because he obviously knows the sort of stuff you're writing about and you're talking to him about it and he just loves saying, <laughs> oh, yeah, you dirty fucker, you're doing this, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, but in a much more <laughs> – in a much more horrified way. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's quite horrified by it. <laughs> so funny. Has he yeah. ever read something you've – you've written and ha- oh, and you feel free to say <laughs> this is a personal question man don't ask this but has he ever written something you've you've written and sort of looked at you and said is this what you want like <laughs> no he, he told me once that um dad and I dad was visiting and we were discussing something and mm. he got up and left my poor husband and he said I can't talk to your father about this stuff <laughs> and and then I said, but it's a story. And he said, I haven't read the sex scenes. I just skipped those bits. <laughs> oh, that's fine. <laughs> so, yeah, he, yeah, it's just, he's just really uncomfortable about it. <laughs> oh, wow. That's really interesting. Yeah. It's, uh, that's, that's Most people are. Most people I know are really, really uncomfortable about it. Why do you think that is? Do you have a theory on why that is, or is it just something that you just accept and are like, whatever? I, I think society really, you know, like nobody talks about sex, do they really? If you do, you kind of do it when you're drunk or over a few drinks or you make yeah. a joke out of it. Like yeah. you don't seriously, you know, discuss it or – well. <laughs> No one I know does that, except erotic writers. We all do. We went on a retreat and we, yeah. oh, we we'll talk about it and had to, you know, like we'd read something out and go, does this work? And then you'd have to work out if your leg went here, did this arm go there? Oh yeah. wow! So yeah. it's like you you get what I would call technical about it. Like, oh yeah. Because you can read if you're reading a sex scene and someone's got three arms, you know, yeah. there's nothing worse than <laughs> you start in there and you suddenly go, oh, they've got three arms. <laughs> no, <laughs> that's the end of yeah, end of any enjoyment in that sex scene. <laughs> you, you know what I think is worse than that is when you're reading it and they use words that are just like a a schoolboy would use. It's like, oh. say, for instance, when they say, and then he grabs her boobies. And it's like, <laughs> yeah. oh, man, come on. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. And we all have words we don't like. Like, I really hate dick and pussy. I just, oh, really? I can't, yeah. But then when your editor goes through your books, they're like, um, you've used cock too many times, you know, you have to come up with something else. And I'm like. They just aren't oh, enough words. <laughs> yeah. What do you use? <laughs> Eventually, like, yeah, you just run out of words. Yeah, it's really hard. That's the hardest thing is when you're doing a sex scene not to have, you know, 50,000 fucks and cocks, you know, yeah. like you just get to the end and you're like, oh, 
and need like, another do, word. Do you, do you select all and every third one you write tally whacker? I like it. I don't. I don't know <laughs> what you do. You know. <laughs> I try to rewrite the sentence so I'm not even using. So you kind of work out what you're talking about, but you don't actually yeah. use the word. Yeah. Yeah. Like I, I, uh, like say instead of that, you would say like your hammer, you know, your love <laughs> weapon, stuff like that. Yeah, that um, what throbbing member. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> I try not to do that either. <laughs> have you have you ever had some of your work edited, and they've changed a word like that, and you've been like, oh no, you're not changing it to that. Oh yeah, if they change. Um, if they if they change stuff to pussy, I'm like, no, sorry, I can't have cats in the book. Sorry, <laughs> no cats. <laughs> I, I don't, like, it's really I'm, weird, but yeah. I'm trying to think if I can ask you what words you prefer without it being like terrible or inappropriate. I don't. Yeah, know. look, I do use the inappropriate word because there aren't a lot of other words. Yeah, and and. You know, like I, I don't know, like the F word has become part of the language easily. I yeah. think, hasn't yeah. it? And and I don't, I don't know why the C word has such bad connotations. And so I'd like to reclaim it and, you know, make it for something useful <laughs> rather than <laughs> a, you know, That's disgraceful saying that. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean. You know, it, it shouldn't be derogatory. It shouldn't be, you know, a horrible swear word. It should be used as like a body part, shouldn't it, really? Look, anyway. I agree 100%. I mean, on this podcast... I don't podcast, know what else you can use. <laughs> see, on this podcast, we normally reserve that word for talking about rugby league journalists. Um, <laughs> and, and beyond that, but I, I agree with you. Like, there's... Like, I don't mind saying the word pussy, personally. But then I think that there's a time and a place to drop yeah. the C-bomb. But it's got to be the right True. time and the right place, I think. Or in my, yeah. you know. I have an editor who likes saying it at writing conferences. <laughs> she has a little tally of how many C-words she got into each writing conference. <laughs> oh, really? What's a, yeah. oh, what's, a, what's a record? I don't know what a record is. I reckon I could break that in the podcast. <laughs> I'm I'm serious. I'm serious. I, I know you haven't listened to all our podcasts, but there's been some where I've I, I've gone up to four, but if I pushed it, oh, I know really? I could hit. Oh yeah, we say it all the time. Oh okay, about yeah. journalists. <laughs> oh well, about anything. I like oh, it anything myself, uh, <laughs> me, Matthew Elliott, all sorts of people. Oh okay. <laughs> <laughs> After listen more. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's it's fantastic. Um, oh. So yeah, well look, thank you for coming. This has been <laughs> this has been amazing. We're going to have you on again because there's other questions that I'm going to come up with in my head. Um, okay. And we'll get I'm you on. Happy to we, answer them. <laughs> oh, it's it, this is just amazing. This is fantastic, and I I'm going to have to find a copy of Cooper Sterling and what was it called? <laughs> Deep diving or deep diving and team player, yeah. Okay, I think I could I... send you one if you read ebooks. Okay, let me take my pants off first. Um... <laughs> <laughs> it, it would be really cool to have. Oh, here's a question: Have you got a audio book? Do you do the, them as audio books? Oh, I don't know. Um, they're with publishers, but yeah. I have um. I have written short stories for, yeah. um, I think, three books in America that have gone to audio books. And one of the ladies who is the editor for two of the stories does her own um, audio. Do you reckon you could do that or do you think it's something that uh, you would prefer someone else to do? Um I think, I don't know, I could probably read my work, I think, without too much worry. I yeah. know when I listened to her reading it, I was the American accent really threw me. Oh, really? You don't think about American accents when, well, I don't when I'm writing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But she, yeah, Rose Carraway is her name. She, write, she has um, 
uh, like a podcast channel as well where she reads out snippets of the erotic stories that she's recording. Yeah. Yeah. She's, That's really yeah. interesting. It's wow. really good, yeah. So she yeah. she had um she put out a call for books about cockholding. So I wrote okay. a story for her about that and yeah. she had another one about sexy librarians and yeah. 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 So she does wow. quite a few different things. Yeah. That's really interesting. So when will we be um <laughs> when will we be hearing about the release of uh the 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 glorious league freak, the lives and times of. And, yeah, look, give me a couple of weeks and I'll <laughs> get your short story. Oh what, man, seventeen cheer girls in that seventeen be, minutes. Yeah, it, yeah, won't take would, long. What would you call it? Like <laughs> the uh, greatest seventeen minutes of my life. <laughs> I was thinking banging pom poms. Ah, oh, see, this way you're the writer. See, that's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> well, the only question, the only question I have is like, is every like couple of minutes, is Ronnie Palmer gonna run in and just you know give me this water bottle, the old sponge, <laughs> yeah, the magic sponge. Oh, <laughs> A bit of that magic spray, you know. When they're oh. out cold and a bit of magic yeah. spray and you're up. Yeah, yeah. It just gets the smelling salts to come back to, and all of a sudden it's like, bring in the next one. (laughs) Oh man, it's fantastic. This is. I'm gonna love writing that. Yeah, I'll have to sit up tonight. (laughs) Ah, just be the most like terrible, like, oh, far out. That's so funny. My God. Um, (laughs) Yeah, well, challenged me to write fish sex once, and I wrote a short story about fishes having sex. Really? I'm sure I could do, yeah. <laughs> Called <laughs> Will of the Whiting. <laughs> oh, my God. I know. Don't ever set me a challenge. Oh, <laughs> oh man. Now I'm going to think of a challenge. <laughs> I'm going to do your banging pom-poms, though. Eh? Banging pom-poms, yeah. And then, <laughs> okay, could you, oh, I wonder if you could do one about crabs. Crabs fucking. <laughs> <What's laughs> <all the> crabs? <laughs> so get the, oh, man, that's brilliant. See? Yeah, it's got to be like. <laughs> Mud crabs. Jeez. Actually, when you go into the science of it, some animals have really boring sex. <laughs> yeah, well. You've got to pick an animal with good sex. What would be an animal that, that uh, has good sex? Um. <laughs> or... One of my friends challenged me another challenge yeah. to write about an octopus. And oh, really? <laughs> yeah, I wrote about an octopus and uh, a woman fishing. And oh, when I sent it to her, she's gone, yep, bestiality and necrophilia. Because <laughs> the, <octopus, laughs> the octopus was having sex with the woman with all those tentacles yeah. and then oh, pulled God. her into the ocean and she drowned. <laughs> Oh, jeez. Honestly, I didn't even realise what I'd done. Anyway, but anyway. Yeah. Yeah. It but reminds, that was fun. All it reminds tentacles. me of, uh, have you ever seen the meme of the two uh, loaves of bread having sex and one of them says, I'm crumbing? <laughs> just no. Me of that. I don't know. Yeah. So it's, <laughs> I've seen it. Uh, it do you? I'll have yeah. to look for that. Yeah. It's uh, it's it's not my most proud fap, but anyway. Um, <laughs> oh man, well look, uh, it's been absolutely fantastic. Um, I, I, I our listeners are are going to be surprised. Traumatized. That this is our podcast, yeah, they're going to be traumatized. They're probably going to absolutely love it. Where can we find um, deep diving with uh, Sterling Cooper? <laughs> Is it Sterling Cooper? No, <laughs> Cooper <on> Sterling. <laughs> yeah, it's getting <laughs> right. <laughs> I just said the dude on Mad Men, Cooper Sterling, and uh, what was the second one called? Team Player. Team Player. Now, where can we find those to oh, buy? Oh, well, they're ebooks, so you can find them on any of the ebook sites like Amazon or iBooks or Kobo. Mm-hmm. Any of those? Google Play. Yeah. 
Okay, and we can Sweet. follow you on Twitter. Do you mind if I give you Twitter? Yeah, email? no, <laughs> you can. I'll cop any abuse on Twitter and hide. <laughs> okay, it, it it is Kate Ellink, so that's C A T E E L L I N K. Um, well, you've been an amazing guest. Thank you so much for coming on, and thank you for being just, uh, just like, I, I. I you, it could have been a really serious conversation, and one where I was like tiptoeing around, but you've made it so much fun and stuff, and I can't wait to have you back on. Oh, it's been great. There's not many people we can have these kind of conversations with, so thank you. Yeah. Hey, look, us, us degenerates, we find each other eventually. Exactly. <laughs> Very much so. <laughs> uh. Thank you. Well, thank you once again. And uh, to all our listeners, go and, go and follow Kate. Go and buy the books. Go on to all of the ebook readers and stuff and, and buy the two books. And support rugby league authors, as I always say. So, um, And you'll enjoy it, no doubt. There's some beach sex scenes, man. I'm, I'm, I'm going to get into some of that. So uh, thank you once again, Kate. And we'll speak to you all later. Thank you.